Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be diving into sequential gearboxes. Now there's all different types of sequential gearboxes, so we're going to be having a look into what is a sequential gearbox, the differences between the rear wheel drive, the front wheel drive sequential gearboxes, how to drive with a sequential gearbox and other common questions that we often get asked. So first of all, we'll start with what is a sequential gearbox? And a sequential gearbox is simply a gearbox that goes from reverse, neutral, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, all in one straight line, as opposed to your standard H pattern gearbox that you'll have in most common road cars today. So sequential gearboxes have been around for decades, first used in the motorcycle industry. So it's not new technology, it's been around for years. All we've done is refine it into different applications and improve the gear change from that. So synchro mesh gearboxes are gearboxes that you'll have in your normal road car, which have a synchronizer, hence synchro, which will slow down the gear and match gear speeds. So it's a nice smooth gear change. So therefore we ask the question, why do we need sequential gearboxes? So sequential gearboxes are designed for race cars so that you can have a very, very fast gear change. Now there are other advantages of having sequential gearboxes fitted in your car. So we can specify the gear ratios. So if you need specific ratios for a track, then this is where sequential gearboxes also come in. We do also at Quaife do a straight cut, different gear ratios for H pattern gearboxes as well. But today we're gonna to be focusing on just the sequentials. So we then have the difference between a rear wheel drive sequential and a front wheel drive sequential. Now, it's pretty obvious what those reasons are. This gearbox here is designed for a inline rear wheel drive car, and this gearbox here is designed for a front wheel drive car. So this gearbox here, we class as a universal gearbox. So this is our Quaif QBE 60G. And the reason it's universal is in all rear wheel drive cars, it's much easier to fit a universal gearbox to that application. Essentially, all you need is a different bell housing, a custom input shaft, rear mount completed, and then prop shafts, which are all fairly readily available to, to have manufactured. In a front wheel drive application, that's far more difficult, purely because the space of the engine bay, the position of the drive shafts, the mounting of the actual gearbox itself. So let's look at why would I want a sequential gearbox? Obviously, there are a significant amount of money to spend on a car, but they have their massive, massive advantages. So a sequential gearbox can save you from misshifting, and it can also save a significant amount of time when out on track. Another advantage with having a sequential gearbox is the different gear ratios that you can have. So you can actually specify a number of different ratios, certainly on the 60G, that will be far better than your standard road going gear ratios. All road cars are designed for efficiency and to meet emission standards. Obviously with racing, we don't care about any of that. We would just want to go fast. So we can specify exactly what ratios we want in the gearbox to get the best lap time. So front wheel drive sequential gearboxes, why do we do so many different versions of them? A lot of companies out there just do your standard universal sequential gearbox. Now, certainly when it comes to front wheel drive gearboxes, universal generally means that it doesn't fit anything and you have to spend a load of money to make it fit. Companies out there will supply a universal gearbox. You then need to have a custom adapter plate made, a custom clutch made, custom drive shafts and custom mounting points. You might even need to adapt the chassis, so i.e. cutting the chassis leg to get the gearbox in the car to fit. The nice thing about the sequential gearboxes that we've done, and we've done these for all the way from the IB5, the PG1s, all the way up to the more modern cars. So we've got the IB6 gearbox coming out very, very soon. Uh, it's likely to be, it's in design at the moment, likely to be next year. We're, we're hoping to have that released into the market. But the nice thing about what we do is we use the standard bell housing. Now, what that enables us to do is by retaining the standard bell housing, we can retain the standard drive shafts so they stay in exactly the same position. We uh, design the gearbox to use the standard uh, gearbox mount, so there's no modification required there, and it fits directly into the same place as the original gearbox. So that means there's a lot less um, cutting, modification, cost, 
that's required when fitting the gearbox. Differences will be the gear lever, so you will need a front wheel drive sequential gear lever that we supply and a single gear cable. A lot of H pattern gearboxes have two gear cables you'll see on the box for obviously forward, back, left and right. The Quaife gearbox comes with one cable. Um, so that's really the only modifying the gear lever to fit inside the car, fairly straightforward. That's really the only modification that you'll need to do. So really nice, straightforward. It also means that the front wheel drive uh, sequentials that we supply are cost effective. You're not spending 12 grand for the gearbox and then spending another you know, five, six grand having it fitted into the car with custom clutches. It all bolts in as you'd expect, which obviously keeps the cost down. You can also use, if you've got an aftermarket clutch, then you can use that in the gearbox. Also, if you're running a, an ATB already, if you've already got a Quaif diff, then that bolts straight into the, the, the same space. So we can use that. So there's a, a saving to be had there. As well as, you know, if you're running a plate diff uh, in a full you know, race car, then that can be converted and put into here with, with no additional cost. So that's the advantage of having a Quaif gearbox over another brand of gearbox. So if you've got any interest in these, we, we list an awful lot, uh, whether it's a Mark II Focus RS, Mark III Focus RS, Honda, um, we do it all the way from the B series, all the way up to the current spec FL5. We've got all the different gearboxes for the, for the front wheel drive Hondas there, as well as you know your standard Lotus Elise, the, any gear car that runs an IB5 gearbox, we supply sequentials for all of those. So please get in touch with us. Any questions on there, then we're, we're, we're happy to help. So we'll go over a little bit more later on in the video on how to drive with a sequential gearbox and what you need to look out for, as well as general service, maintenance, things like that. So going back to the 60G, which is our rear wheel drive sequential gearbox. So this gearbox here is based solely on the Type 9. So the Ford Type 9 rear wheel drive sequential, uh, rear wheel drive gearbox, sorry. I believe we have around 50 to 60 different input shaft options for this gearbox. So whether you are just replacing your standard Type 9 or whether you want to fit it onto a you know, K20, for example, we do different, different input shafts. Um, we also do you know, your, your, your Master MX-5s, your SR20s. On the bigger brother to this gearbox, the 69G, we do you know, the uh, LS, 2JZ, the RBs, all different types of uh, adapter packs for that. So we supply them either with adapter plates. So if you've got a removable bell housing from the standard gearbox, then we make a nice adapter plate to adapt from the 60G to the bell housing that you're currently running. Alternatively, is that some gearboxes are inbuilt, so the actual main case is integral to the bell housing. Um, we do different bell housings, so we actually have a separate bell housing that we can supply with the gearboxes. Then you look at your prop shaft, so there's plenty of different companies out there um, that will make different prop shafts. Then you've got the rear mount, that's a fairly simple, you know, if you're fitting a sequential, fabricating up a rear mount is very straightforward. So fitting a rear wheel drive sequential into a car is far simpler than having a universal front wheel drive sequential. So another question we get asked a lot with sequential gearboxes is what electronics do I need? It's something that people often sort of overlook, if you like. Now, running a sequential gearbox and fitting a sequential gearbox in your car doesn't mean that you can just flat shift. You see it on you know, the internet and people that, where they're holding the foot flat on the, on the floor and they're just pulling the lever. Now, that takes electronics to do that. It doesn't mean that you can fit a sequential and do that straight off the bat. You can run a sequential gearbox in a car with no electronics. Um, that is possible to do. What we'll do later on the video is show you how to change with a sequential gearbox in a car with no electronics. But if you, you know, if you want to get the most out of your sequential, then I'd always recommend running electronics. So you, you've got a couple of options there. Most ECUs now have gearbox capability, so they'll be able to run flat shift. You can set flat shift up on there. Alternatively, if you don't have an ECU that can do that, then you can fit a Geartronics Easy Shift. So if you go to Geartronics website, then you can look at all the different options on there. So with flat shifting, you have two different ways of doing it. You can run a open loop system or you can run a full closed loop system. 
So the open loop system is simply just a timed cut. So you'll set it for, let's say, 60 milliseconds, and the GCU, the gearbox ECU, or the engine ECU will cut the ignition for a set amount of time. Um, if the gear change doesn't happen in that set amount of time, you have no fail safe. So it will just re-engage the, uh, the, the drive, if you like, and could potentially damage the gearbox. What's safer is running a full closed loop system. So what that means is that as soon as you pull the gear lever, it will cut the ignition. Then when the potentiometer sees that the cam drum has made a full rotation, it will then allow the ignition to, to, to come back into life. That's much safer because it actually ensures that the uh, gearbox has completed its gear change. So I'd always recommend running a full closed loop system. Again, there's more information on that on the Geartronics website. So please, you know, if you've got any further questions on that, go and check that out as well. There's some really good information on there. In terms of servicing of the sequential gearbox, a lot of people say, you know, how, how often do I need to service my gearbox? People seem to think that because it's an expensive gearbox, it's bulletproof and it will just last forever. That's not the case. Uh, it is a motorsport transmission, so it does need to be looked after. Uh, the same as you would, you know, an engine. Uh, a lot of people I know in racing strip their engine after, you know, the season, have a fresh rebuild every season. We recommend the same with the gearbox. Uh, just good practice to take it apart, make sure everything's working in harmony, whether it's, you know, your driving, whether it's the, the ECU, uh, just checking over the gearbox once a, once a year is always, you know, good practice. What you'd expect to see in, in gearboxes and, and wear and tear, um, obviously gear teeth they're gonna wear in high temperature, high power situations. Um, so you always want to inspect the, inspect the gears, make sure that there's, there's no significant wear to them. As well as the dog rings, the dog rings are probably the most common thing that wears inside, inside a sequential gearbox. Normally, I have drivers that, that we deal with that don't have any electronics on their, on their gearbox and they can feel it. When they miss a shift, it just feels like the, the dogs just, just nip together and you, you actually feel that in the car. And when you pull the gearbox apart, you can see that the corners of the dogs have just started to, to get a bit of wear. The pins on the selector fork are another thing to look out for. Again, where, you've, where you might have a gear change where you get back on the power a little bit too soon and it just knocks that dog, it can sometimes damage the pins on the selector fork. So that's another thing to look out for. We do offer a full service on our, all of our gearboxes. So if you have got a Quaif gearbox, feel free to send it back to us. We'll do a full strip down of it. Whenever we service the gearbox, we take the cases off. We literally strip it down to all individual components, put it through the wash tank and then put it all on the bench and inspect each component individually. Some people might just take the cases off and just look at it from there, but we like to actually pull it, pull it completely apart. Whenever we service the gearbox as well, we always refresh the whole thing with new bearings, seals, gaskets. Everything gets replenished that is a, a serviceable item. So feel free to drop us an email if you'd like us to have a look at your sequential gearbox, service it, in, and we are quite strict with the gearboxes. So when they come back to you, they'll be you know good as new. We like to be fairly thorough with them and know that you're going to have another season, you know, successfully racing with your Quaif gearbox. So bear that in mind if you are thinking about a sequential gearbox. You know they're not the answer if you just want to fit it and forget it, forget about it. You do need to look after them. You do need to service them as you do with any, any motorsport product. So another question that we get asked quite a lot is the power and torque that gearboxes can handle. And ultimately the one thing that I've seen over the years of what hurts gearboxes is generally shock loading. So when I talk about shock loading, if you imagine a car jumping over a bridge, an Irish rally driver, they're the hardest people on, on, on gearboxes, they really are. So when they obviously jump over a bridge and then land on the road, that's a massive amount of shock load that goes through the gearbox. If you've got you know, touring cars, when they smash onto the curbs, that's what's gonna hurt a gearbox. So what you might see is you know, a tooth popped off. That, that's purely down to, to shock loading. If you see all of the gears stri stripped on, or all the teeth, sorry, stripped on a gear, then that's generally power and torque. So all of our gearboxes are 
designed certainly the front wheel drive gearboxes are designed based on the standard shaft centers so we are a little bit restricted in in how big we can make the gears however we make the gears out of high-end EN39 material so they are going to be significantly stronger than what you've got in your standard road car the size of the teeth are obviously a lot bigger than uh, what you'll find in your standard helical road car so that's another factor to to take into account that the helical teeth on a on a gear are designed purely for noise and to be efficient we're not worried about that again because yeah, we're in motorsport, we just want a strong gearbox that takes the power that transfers the, the torque to the road. So our, even in our helical gearboxes, we'll show you in the car, we've got a helical gearbox fitted in our Mark III Focus RS. You do still get a little bit of that whine that you'd get from a straight cut. It's not as extreme, but that's purely because the size of the teeth in these gearboxes are a little bit bigger than what you'll have in your, your standard road car. Obviously then you've got the next step up, which is full straight cut. Now they're not necessarily any stronger than our big tooth helical kits, we'll call them. They just transfer more power to the ground, so there's less transmission loss. That's the advantage of a straight cut over a helical, is you know if you were to dyno the two, you'd actually, your, your wheel horsepower would be more with a straight cut sequential than it would be with a big tooth semi-helical sequential. Again, the same if you've got your standard gearbox fitted in your in your car and you go and fit one of our straight cut gearboxes, you will see an increase in horsepower. That's the other advantage of, of fitting one of our one of our gearboxes. So I think I've spoken about everything there is on, on the two sequential gearboxes that I've got in front of me and sequentials as a whole. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments section and we'll come back and answer them. Now it's time to get in the car and let's show you you know, driving a sequential gearbox on the road, the things that you can do, the things that you can't do. So yeah, let's go out and get in the car.